right, section 4.3, we are going to talk about definite integrals. Last week, or a couple weeks ago, I guess, probably now, it's been a couple of weeks, we talked about indefinite integrals, and we're going to talk about definite integrals today. Now, some of you might wonder, because I wondered this the first time I saw it too, was um, why is it that sometimes when you look at an integral, you are supposed to do that. Remember the stuff we talked about last week, where you add a power and then divide by that power? You had to work backwards to figure out what was the original function if you were given the derivative. Well, today what we're going to do is give okay, another notation for integrals and how are you supposed to know what you're supposed to do when and why does the same symbol tell us to do two different things but tomorrow or the next day I will tie it together how the two are related so for today I need you just to kind of hang in there this is the integral symbol this number down here I'm adding a little bit to what we talked about before we've talked about the integral symbol before but now I am putting this a and b at the top and the bottom so the integral from a to b, a being what we call the lower limit, b being called the upper limit of f of x dx. So in other words, I would give you a function and ask you to find the integral of it. When you see integrals with this notation, in other words, with a lower and an upper limit, what I'm asking you to do is find the area between the function between the f of x and the x-axis. So you'll see the integral symbol, but if I give you a lower and an upper limit, it's asking you to find the area that exists between the x-axis and the function. I'll draw you guys a picture here in just a second. Um, so here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis. Let's just say that your, that your um, function looks something like this. And I am asking you to find the area from A to B. So in other words, this A is there, and this B is this value right here. Well, I'm asking you to find the area that exists between the x-axis and the curve itself. So what I'm asking you to do is find this area right here, which is a huge part of what calculus is all about. Calculus is all about finding areas of obscure figures. Like you guys know how to find areas of triangles and circles and such, but what if I give you a weird shaped figure and I ask you to find the area of that? There's no formula. You've never been taught a formula to find the area of very odd shaped figures. So that's what calculus is all about, is finding areas of weird shaped things like that. Okay? So um, this right here is what we call a positive area. And the reason it is positive area, I take a wild guess, why would this be considered positive area? Because it's above the x-axis. Well, you could have, like this area, this region right down here, though it is not part of our lower and upper limits, if I was asking you to find the area over here, this would be considered a what kind of area? Negative. Negative. You guys are so smart. Negative area. That area right there is negative area. Okay. Um, so in this case, what if I asked you to find the area from A to C? If I asked you to find the area from A to C and it's still the same rule, some function, whatever the rule is, what would you do? If you had the area of the top part and you had the area of the bottom part, what would you do to choose the two to get your total area? Add Just add them together. Now, if the area underneath the x-axis ended up being a larger number than the area above the x-axis, what kind of an area are you going to have? You have a negative area, okay? So when you have this, you're just going to add them, you're going to add them together. Alright, example. So, okay, if it was um, 8, I wouldn't want to find it. But if 
means. So what we need to do is think about what does this graph look like? If you were to graph 4, what does it look like? The horizontal line. The horizontal line, yeah. So I'm going to draw a little sketch of it over here. You should probably do that. I'm going to go up here to 4. I'm going to draw a horizontal line. But I am only asking you to find the area that is below that line and above the x-axis from where to where? 1 and 3. From 1 to 3. So my x value here is 1. Um, my first x value. The second x value is 3. I am only asking you to find the area underneath there from 1 to 3. So do you see how we create a pretty... Okay, let's pretend these lines are straight, okay? <laughs> Let's do the, okay, here we go. Let's ignore that. All right. Just from here to here. What shape did I just make? Rectangle. You just made a rectangle. Okay, so how, how high is this rectangle? What's the left side? How tall is it? It's four tall. And then how long is it? It goes from one to three. It's too long. So we have a rectangle here that has dimensions of four and two. And obviously I did not draw my picture proportional at all. What is the area of a rectangle that's four by two? Eight. Gonna be eight. Uh oh. Rectangle. rectangle area equals what times what? Length, Length times yeah. width. Yeah. Base times height, however you want to think of it. L times W. Length times width. Okay, but now we're going to get into some other shapes like triangles and trapezoids and circles, and you're going to have to know how to find the areas of all those things. Now, for those of you that are like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to do this, look at the front cover of your book. The very front cover of your book. Okay, I lied. Look at the back cover of your book. Look at the back cover of your book. There's lots of shapes in here, and they tell you the areas of all of them, okay? So please use this. Will I let you use this on the test? No. If, you, if you need it, then yes, I will, or I will provide you with the formula or whatever, okay? Also, I want to mention that there's a whole bunch of formulas over there on the side wall. Oh, no. They are there if you need them, okay? All right. Areas, length, times, width. Let's do this one. Um, find the area from 0 to 3 of x plus 2 dx. x plus 2 dx. The first thing that you need to do is figure out what does that look like. If it was just 4, is that a 0? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a 0. Yeah. When it was just 4, we had a horizontal line of 4. X plus 2, what kind of, what kind of graph is that? Come on. You've got to graph a line. And this comes back to, do you remember how to graph a line? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> she was so hurt. Okay, pretend my y-axis is vertical. Um, we have, what's the y-intercept of this line? Two. Two. Go to two on the y-axis and put a point. What is the slope of this graph? The slope is the number in front of x. In this case, it's a 1. The slope is 1. 
slope means, if we could go back to like eighth grade math, slope means rise over run. Rise over run, okay? So from this point, what I'm going to do is rise. I'm going to rise one at the same time that I'm going to run one. So I get a point right here. And then from this point, I'm going to rise one more, and I'm going to run one more. So now I'm right here. So, and I could continue to do that regardless of how many times. I'm going to get a line right here. And technically, that line goes on infinitely far to the left and to the right. So this is what your graph looks like. But I only need to know the area of this thing from 0 to 3. So I'm going to start right here at 0, and I'm going to end right here at 3. So what I'm going to do is draw a vertical line that goes up to my line. Right here. What shape have I just created? A trapezoid. A trapezoid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is calculus, right? Nope. Doing this checking. Okay, so we have this line and this line are parallel. Whenever you have a pair of parallel sides, it's called a trapezoid. So go to your, I want to make sure you know how to get this information. So find the H area over two of a trapezoid. I'm going to write that over here. Area, I'm going to abbreviate trapezoid. The area of a trapezoid is, I believe, there's, there's versions of this formula, but base 1 plus base 2 times the height divided by 2. Is that what it says in your book? What does it say in your book? H over 2, two B plus, B plus B. Okay, that's the same thing I wrote. So is it in your way easier or yours? I, I don't know. Uh, it's the same formula. You're adding the two parallel sides together. And that's an H. <laughs> B1 plus B2 times H divided by 2. So what is... What are the bases? What are the lengths of the bases? In other words, how long, how tall is this side right here? Two. It's two. How long or how tall is this side over here? Two. Five. How did you figure out that it was five? Yeah, the x value here, the x value along this line is three. So if I put a three into my rule, what is three? plus 2 oh. is 5. So this side right here is 5. The height of this thing is this. How, how, how high is this? You gotta kind of imagine like you had turned it. This the, the far right and the far left would be the bases. How tall is this thing? It's 3 tall. So now take this 2, the 5, and the 3, throw them into your formula, and you'll have your area. So in this case, we are going to have base 1, which is 5, plus base 2, which is 2, or vice versa. Multiply that by the height. What is the height? 3. 3, and then we have to divide all of that by 2. 5 plus 2 is 7, times 3 is 21, divided by 2 gets you, gets you 10.5. So the area underneath that line between 0 and 3 in the x-axis is 10.5. This is not the number. What would you say? Um, well, in a trapezoid, the parallel sides are the bases. Okay. Does that help? Yep. You guys, Samari just asked a good question. How are you going to know which ones are the bases? The parallel sides are the bases. Okay, it doesn't matter which position it sits in. Typically, the base you think of as being on the bottom. So if you need to, for your sake, if you need to imagine rotating this figure, then go ahead and do that. But the bases, B1 and B2, are the parallel sides. If you need to make a note of that, please make a note of that. All right. Let's jot down a couple of um, other formulas that you might need. Area of a circle. See if you remember. Pi r squared. Pi r squared. Did you cheat or did you just know? I knew. I'm right. Uh, oh, that's true. 
that's right. Uh, we did talk about that formula earlier in the year. And something else that you might know, need to know, oh, the area of a triangle. We should just review that one quickly, too. I think you need to know much more than these. Area of a triangle is what? One half BH. Yeah, one half BH. Or BH divided by two. Or half BH, whatever means the same thing. All right. We are almost done, believe it or not. <laughs> Lynn, I hope you're having a positive attitude right now. Oh, you know. I never know. <laughs> All right, example. If f of x, that's not what I meant to write. and I'm asking you to do this from 0 to 2. If this is true, and I also tell you that the integral from 2 to 3 of the same function is equal to 1, and I tell you that the integral from 3 to 10 of the same function is equal to negative 2, I give you all that information. What is the integral from 0 to 3 of that same function? From 0 to 3. I'm asking you to find the integral from 0 to 3. The integral from 0 to 2, from 0 to 2 is 5. And then the integral from 2 to 3 is 1. So if I'm asking you to go from 0 to 3, you are going to take 5 plus 1, which is 6. Yeah, there will be problems as easy as this. I will give you the value. What is the matter? Yeah, what is that last thing for? Oh, I'm not done yet. Oh, you were laughing about something. What are you laughing about? What? <laughs> All right, what about this? What about the integral from 2 to 10? From 2 to 10, what is it? 3. Negative 1? What would you do? Added 1. I added. <laughs> From 2 to 3, it's 1. From 3 to 10, it is negative 2. You add them together, you get negative 1. Wait, OK. So I'm telling you that it was some, you've got some function. I don't know what the function looks like, but let's just say it looks like this. And I am asking you to find the area just from 0 up here to 3. But I told you that from 0 to 2 up to this point right here, from 0 to 2, it's 5. So the area of this part right here is 5. But then I also tell you that the area from 2 to 3, this part right here, is 1. Well, if I ask you to go all the way from 0 to 3, you're going to take the two areas and add them together. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Wait, I don't get, I don't get where the confusion is. Um, From zero, from 0 to 2, it's 5. So from here to here, it's 5. And then from 2 to 3, it's 1. Okay. Did I say 0 to 3 first, and then again from 2 to 3? Is that what I said? I did. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, and then what if I... Okay, I think, I think we're good there with those examples. A um, couple of quick definitions. Silly 
definition, but I think it will show up today. So if I ask you guys to find the integral of something, but the upper and the lower limit are exactly the same, regardless of what the shape looks like, if I'm asking you to find the limit from A to A, that's like having, yeah, it's going to be zero. That's like having some, you know, some graph that looks like this, and I ask you to find the limit, not the limit, to find the integral of just the value at 2. Well, if it goes from 2 to 2, does it have any area? It doesn't have any area. So if these two numbers match, the lower and the upper limit match, it's just common sense. It will have no area. From A to A, it's going to have no area. And then one more. If you know if you know that from A to B the, um, the area is something, say it's 5, and then I switch the A and the B, you are going to get exactly the opposite of what you would. And that would be something that would come up more in like a physics-based calculus class. And some of you will go on to study that kind of stuff in college. You will, um, stuff like this will make more sense because it has to do with force and energy and stuff, which is, well, the energy, so that would be on the Sarah, on the Sarah branch kind of question. But if you, flip the, if you flip the upper and the lower limits, the, the integrals are going to be exactly the opposite of each other. Right, and that's going to show up today, too. So let's say that you know that from A to B, this is, this is 10. You know that the value of this is 10. What's this going to be? If you flip the A and the B around, it's going to be negative 10. Negative 10. Negative 10. Negative 10. Negative 10. Okay? Okay.